Hello, everyone, and welcome to the fifth session in American English Live Series 15. We are so excited that each of you is here with us today. We, uh, I am Kate, my name is Kate, and I'll be with you today along with my colleague behind the scenes, Heather, who will be the moderator helping to answer your questions and responding to your comments during the session. Let's begin today with these wonderful comments from our audience from our most recent webinar, Becoming a News Reporter, a Case Study in Project-Based Learning with Jeremy Beal. So Saud in Lebanon said, the webinar was incredible, as was the information on using culture-based projects, scaffolding, and addressing community issues. Thank you for that wonderful comment. And next, I was familiar with project-based learning, but I thought it was only for science subjects. However, today's session helped me understand that it is also beneficial for all four English language skills from Sadia in Pakistan. Wonderful. And finally, I didn't know how to create a good project that is relevant to my students' real lives, but now I know exactly how to approach my students to set up a project and how to use a rubric. I got a lot of ideas and knowledge from the presenter from Han Ni in Burma. Thank you so much for those wonderful uh, re uh, comments. We love to see our teacher participants actively engaged in professional development. So please continue to share your thoughts about our webinars by offering feedback through the end of session quiz form, or you can email us at AmericanEnglishWebinars at FHI360.org. We may feature one of your comments during the next webinar. Throughout series 15, we've been exploring the themes of using music in the classroom, project-based learning, and multi-level classrooms. We hope you are able to use the practical ideas we share. Also, we want to remind everyone that daylight savings time ends in the United States on November 6th. This means that the last session in our webinar series may have a different start time in your local area. We will broadcast at 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on November 16th, but it may start one hour earlier than, you, than usual where you are. So please use the time converter link being shared in the chat to confirm your local start time. Be sure to enter the webinar date, November 16th, when using the converter tool. Please uh, double check and triple check. We don't want you to miss our final session. So here's what to expect today. The session is about 60 minutes long. The presenter will present the material and I, as your host, will ask questions and make comments too. But we really hope to hear from you, our audience, so that we can address your ideas and experiences. Please share your thoughts using the comments feature or chat box. And when our session comes to a close, you will have an opportunity to receive a digital badge for your participation. At the end of the webinar, we'll share a link in the comments. Click on that link and complete a short quiz about today's session. You must answer two out of three multiple choice questions correctly. Once you've successfully passed the quiz, you can expect to get your badge via email within about a week. And last, before we begin, we are thrilled to share the AE Live Series 16 schedule with you all. We'll explore teaching about climate change in the first two webinars, and the remaining sessions will refresh and enhance your knowledge in relation to a variety of core ELT topics. So come learn with us in the new year. You can use the link being shared in the chat and comments to receive reminders about AE Live Series 16 sessions. And now for today's webinar, Alternatives to Classroom Debate. Teachers often turn to debate as a structure to engage students in lively discussion. However, the results often do not live up to the teacher's expectations. One of the main problems is that debate requires speaking from a position of certainty and most selected topics require a mindset of curiosity, an appreciation of nuance, and a willingness to understand alternative perspectives. The session will articulate the limitations of a debate format and then introduce several alternatives teachers can use to cultivate the 21st century skills their students need to discuss challenging topics. And we're pleased to introduce our presenter, Stephanie owens Upadje. Stephanie is a lifelong learner and educator with over 15 years of experience in the TESOL field. She began her career as a Fulbright English teaching assistant in Chile, 
and has taught students and trained teachers in Turkey, India, Ukraine, North Africa, and the United States. She has created nationwide teacher training programs, led curriculum development projects, provided one-on-one -on -one coaching for teachers and program directors, and facilitated workshops for teachers and leaders. Originally from Connecticut, Stephanie holds a CELTA and an MA in TESOL from Adelphi University. Welcome, Stephanie. We're so happy to have you here with us today. Oh, thank you. Thanks for the great introduction, Kate. And welcome, everyone. I'm glad you could join. And I'm really excited to discuss this topic with you today. So let's get into it and take a look at our objectives. So in this session, we're going to identify the intended objectives of a debate. We will look at an example of a debate that didn't work so well. And then probably the most exciting part, I'll share three different activities that you can use in class to cultivate 21st century skills in your students. Uh, so let's make sure we know what I mean when I say classroom debate. So here I'm focused on a formal debate, which means we usually start with a controversial topic, like should capital punishment be legal? or maybe should cell phones be prohibited in schools. There are usually two opposing teams and it has a very formal structure. So with an opening, arguments, rebuttals, and a closing. And then there's one winner or one winning team. So now that you know my definition, I have a question for you. So what skills are we trying to develop when we use debates in class? Why do we like to use them in class? Let us know everybody, what skills are we trying to develop when we use debates in class? What do you think? Let's see, let's take a look. Let's see, I would probably say um, listening and speaking skills are some of them. Definitely. So let's take a look. Communication skills from Inam, critical thinking. What skills are we trying to develop? Um, let's see, speaking and critical thinking, listening, speaking, critical thinking. Zuf Zufia says speaking, critical thinking skills from Mary. A lot of people are saying um, critical thinking. Mm -hmm. Communication, problem solving, speaking, speaking confidence from Valentina. And Pedro also says we try to develop listening and speaking. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, those are great. Thank you. And so we'll see what I have. You anticipated or said a lot of these. Um, so hopefully we're trying to get students to build fluency and speaking, use opinion or argument language read and listen closely and work with classmates. And I definitely agree with that critical thinking and creativity. So I understand why we choose debate as an activity technique because these are great objectives, they're really important, but it takes a lot of work to make a debate effective enough to accomplish these. Uh, so let's see how we're doing with our objectives. We already did one, so we know what we're trying to achieve when we have a debate. So let's take a look of an, uh, at an example that didn't go so well. And this is the question for you to think about as I describe the scenario on our next slide. So I'll tell you about a classroom debate and what's ineffective about this debate setup. What might not be working? Okay, so this class is a remote conversation class. It's a high intermediate level. There are 25 students and the students are teenagers, about 15 to 18 years old. These are the instructions from the teacher. Um, so the teacher says, today we're doing a debate. I'll put you into four groups and you'll research online. The topic is, should men and women be treated equally in the workplace? Group one and two, you are pro. Group three and four, you are con. And now you can get started. Okay. So what's not working about this setup? 
Let us know, everybody. What do you think is a little bit ineffective about this setup? What are your thoughts? May, what are some ways that maybe this is not necessarily developing those skills we were hoping to develop? Let's see. Do you see any issues or problems? So I would say I think there are we, there are definitely some details missing. I think maybe the teacher could provide a few more details. Mm -hmm. But what do you think? Valentina says there's no preparation stage. <coughs> There aren't very structured instructions from Natalia. Mm -hmm. What else do you think? What problems might arise if you introduce a debate scenario like this? Shahiran also says there aren't clear instructions. Very limited information from Inam. Tatiana says we do not give students a chance to choose the sides, absolutely. Forcing learners to be pro or con is not good from Roger. There might be a misinterpretation of ideas from Lubna. And there might not be time to search for those uh, for that information. And Pedro says if the students are 15 to 18 years old, that might not be relevant for them. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. All right. Those were great. I agree with everyone. And uh, I'll here are some of the outcomes. This is what happened in the class. So uh, the students just kind of searched the internet for about 20 minutes, but had a lot of trouble finding good sources. Uh, some students expressed frustration, saying things like, teacher, I can't defend something I don't believe. So you all pointed that out, how students didn't have a chance to choose a side. Uh, a lot of the arguments were not based on critical thinking. So there are a lot of stereotypes, things like, oh, women have big feelings, so they can't work in some places. Um, and finally, I mentioned there are about 25 students in the class, and only one or two of them spoke more than one to two sentences. Um, so it's clear that in this case, we didn't meet we didn't meet those objectives that we listed before and in general debates have many pitfalls or drawbacks so one of them that i believe it was pedro just pointed out first drawback is a lot of students don't have enough world experience to have an informed opinion um, especially this topic. Our students are in school. They don't have workplace experience to draw on. It wasn't relevant to them. Also, um, doing debates well requires a lot of scaffolding that a lot of teachers don't have time for. You need to understand the structure. You need to research deeply and have high quality sources. Um, and that's a lot of work when we're really going for fluency and lots of speaking. Then um, this one's really important to me. Uh, most popular debate topics do not have a simple solution. And so rather than uh, saying who's right or wrong, I think it's more important to solve problems, find ways forward, and collaborate on solutions. And that's related to this next part of um, focusing on winning your, for your side rather than collaborating. And finally, um, debates encourage students to dismiss or argue with people with different perspectives rather than empathizing or really listening to their ideas and making it part of the solution. So I think there's a lot of skills that we want to be developing and a great word for those are 21st century skills. So maybe that's a familiar term for you. And if not, I'm going to show you what I mean. Okay, so there are many 21st century skills. I picked some of the ones that are most important for my students. And uh, we'll reference this chart as we move forward um, doing our activities. So the first one, first two really, are critical thinking and creativity. So finding solutions to problems and thinking outside the box. Then we have communication and collaboration. Those are objectives you all mentioned. 
So talking and listening to each other and working to create something or create something new. Then flexibility is maybe changing your plan or changing your mind based on new information, so being open-minded and ready to adjust. And finally, some social skills that are important are being aware of others' perspectives and understanding your own perspective, your own biases, and also strengths. So with these in mind, I have another question for you. Okay, so in your opinion, from this chart or your own ideas, which 21st century skills aren't really developed by debates? What do you think, everyone? Which of those 21st century skills aren't effectively developed by debates? And this is a really great visual of all of these skills in one place. So thank you so much, Stephanie. Um, this is really great. What do you think, everyone? Which of these skills are not effectively developed by debates? What are some things that aren't really included? Halina says all of them. <laughs> all right. Wajiha says flexibility. Inam says number two and four, communication and collaboration and also social skills. Mm -hmm. That is true. What do you think? Jessam says critical thinking and creativity is not necessarily um, developed by debates. Tayaba says flexibility, social skills and flexibility from Rahul. And Karen also says flexibility. I think that a lot of people agree, and I also would agree that especially that flexibility piece is really uh, not easily incorporated into that uh, traditional debate style. So thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you. I also agree. So uh, we've identified several reasons why a traditional formal debate is challenging in ELT settings. There are times when debate is a great choice. So here's Here's some ideas for when debate is the activity you're looking for. Um, so students have analyzed samples and they understand the genre of debate. Students have access to high quality sources. Maybe they know where to look. Maybe you have articles or videos for them to research from. Uh, you really want them to read and research. Formal language is more of a focus than conversational language, and students have a lot of time to prepare. So debates can do a lot for our students, but also they might not be the best choice for 21st century skills. Um, so here's when to choose some alternatives. So fluency is your focus. You want to have a lot of creativity and questioning and problem solving when students are developing everyday kind of informal conversation skills and you want a lot of student talk time without a lot of prep. So I hope that uh, focusing on these alternatives gets you excited for our next section of the webinar, but that you still feel comfortable using debates because they really can be in a part of an effective teaching practice. So let's see how we're doing. All right, we know what we're trying to do with the debate. We saw a way that a debate might, might not work so well. And so hopefully, like I said, this gets you excited to see those three activities that will help us cultivate 21st century skills. So let's see what they're called. So our three activities are going to be discussion brackets, scenarios, and one called See, Think, Wonder. So we're gonna talk about and participate in these. And the first one looks like this. All right. Kate, have you ever seen a diagram like this before? Yeah, I think I've seen it in something related to sports like um, basketball tournaments or something. Yes, uh, so traditionally tournaments, uh, it's called March Madness is the most popular one in the US. So keeping track of who's winning sports games is how it's traditionally used but we can also use it to facilitate a lot of speaking practice in class. So this is how you set it up. 
All right, so your first step as the teacher is to choose a topic. It should be familiar and low stakes. So maybe not a very serious controversial topic, something students know about and like to talk about. So it could be breakfast foods, indoor activities or hobbies, school subjects, places to visit, fictional characters like superheroes maybe. Uh, so today, Kate and I are going to talk about indoor activities. All right, the next step for you as the teacher is, this is happening in class, so draw a bracket on the board with eight starting spaces and then label the brackets A, B, C, D and repeat again. So it's A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. This helps students know whose turn it is to talk. Then the next step, this is when your students start to get involved. So you'd brainstorm a list of indoor activities. So a nice vocab list. And I believe mine looks like this. Oh, we're gonna pick eight of those words and fill in the bracket. So this is what it looks like. So we decided to talk about bowling, playing board games, playing cards, watching TV, et cetera. And um, this is a great chance by asking students to create the list, you know what they're excited about, and you also have a chance to clarify unfamiliar words. So this is the whole class. And the last step before students get ready to speak is dividing the students into groups of four. And each student will be A, B, C, or D. So again, they'll know which category they're talking about. All right. Here are the instructions for students. You can share them with students. You can write them on the board, practice together. So this is what the students need to know. Students A and B will speak first and they take 30 to 60 seconds to prepare their arguments or points. Then student A has a minute to speak. Student B has a minute to speak or less. Sometimes you don't need the full minute. And while they're talking, students C and D listen and they vote on which topic moves forward. So, uh, and if there's a tie, this is very informal. So the whole group can discuss, they can reach an agreement. All right. So Kay and I are gonna, are already prepared. So we're going to demonstrate this for you. So Kate is student A, I'm student B talking about board games. And audience participants, you are students C and D. So please listen to our points and let us know which topic should move forward when we think about what's the best indoor activity. All right, so Kate, you get to start. All right, here I go. Well, the best indoor activity is bowling. Bowling is great because it is really fun. It, you can get exercise, you can play with your friends. And even though you're inside, you can still have fun and be goofy. So um, I think this is why bowling is the best activity. Okay. All right. Thanks, Kate. Now it's my turn. Uh, for me, I think playing board games is the best indoor activity. First of all, you can choose from a lot of options. So it's up to you what kind of vibe you want, maybe something very competitive maybe something silly or a party type game, or maybe something where you work collaboratively and you all win or all lose. Uh, secondly, you can also play with a wide range of people. So depending on the game you choose, you could play with your four-year-old nephew, you could play with your grandma, or you could play with your best friend. And finally, I think playing board games is the best indoor activity because it builds a lot of skills. It helps you collaborate and strategize and really think through and plan. So that's why I think playing board games is the best indoor activity. All right. What do you think, everybody? Oh, man. Well, guess what? 
Everyone's already responding that playing board games was the winner. I have to admit, you did do a better job of defending your indoor activity. So, Gabby, thank you very much, says both are great, but I would agree. I think probably playing board games is the winner. So thanks, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the feedback, everyone. I'm glad you thought I've taught opinion writing a lot. So I'm glad I could use the strategies I teach. And so this is the next step. As you can see, it's not my name moving forward, right? It's my topic. So playing board games moves forward. You might also notice that it's orange and it still has the letter A. So that means that Kate is going to speak again. So the person whose topic didn't move forward gets to speak again. I think this is a really important note because it encourages active listening. Maybe Kate will use some of my ideas and add her own. And it also gives this person a chance to improve and practice again instead of like losing and then just sitting around in class. So um, also during this next part, while she's getting ready to go against student C or D, I can help her plan as well. And we get to work together. So to wrap this up, our bracket might look like this, maybe watching TV advanced. And so now Kate is going to go against student C and we will say that playing board games won. So you just keep playing until the topic wins. And then to wrap this up with your class, there's a lot of questions you could ask. You could just check in and say which topic won in your group because it's less about um, the speakers and just to see what was interesting? What was a surprising point? You might ask students, what changed your mind about a topic? Maybe you weren't excited about board games before, but now you want to try some. All right. So that's the basic version. Just creating a list and discussing each topic and moving them through the bracket. And once your students have done this a few times, they are ready for the advanced version or the complex version. So the setup is still the same, brainstorming the list, filling in the bracket. But I don't know, Kate, if this has happened to you in your classes, but whenever I ask my students their opinion, they always go, oh, teacher, it depends. <laughs> so, um, this is going to give them that, well, what does it depend on? So we're deepening thinking with a perspective or a point of view. So of course, uh, the appeal of an indoor activity depends on who's doing the activity. So maybe if you consider a grandmother and a grandchild, which would they like better? Three siblings or someone who just got home from a long day of work. So I think Kate and I are going to try one of these and we're going to do someone who just got home from a long day of work. What's better for that person, bowling or playing board games? Are you ready, Kate? I'm ready. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. So there are many reasons why bowling is the best activity for someone who just got home from a long day of work. The first one is that they can get exercise, especially if someone who is working at an office job and is mostly sitting down all day, it's really important to sit or to stand up and to move your body around. So bowling is a great form of exercise, indoor exercise. Secondly, bowling is a great stress reliever. If your day has been long and stressful, it's a nice opportunity to just relax and get your get your um, uh, anger out on the bowling pins and things like that. And then finally, it's a great way to connect with people outside of work. So if maybe you are going bowling with your friends or your family members, and you can just laugh and have a good time and sort of forget about all the things that happened at work. So these are the reasons why bowling is the best indoor activity for someone who just got home from a long day of work. Wow, okay. This really changed all of my points and I'm having to think really hard and I don't think I can 
I don't think board games can win, but I guess I'll try. Um, board games are a great indoor activity for someone who got home from a long day of work. Um, they can help take your mind off of what you were thinking about or worried or stressed about at work and focus on something else. And also, maybe you could choose a board game that is funny or has a creative side or something where you don't have to think about work. Oh, no. I really have to say Kate won this one. And it was difficult because my husband and I don't play board games after work because we're too tired. <laughs> so uh, you can see that this really changes how we have to think. Kate did an amazing job. And hopefully if you want to challenge your students to answer that, well, it depends thing, here is how you can make it work in your class. All right, so the first step would be brainstorm with your class or create the list on your own, five to eight different points of view or variables. Um, then write it up on the board, make sure everyone knows. And you have a lot of options for how students will pick for each bracket. So here's a few choices. The first one is maybe students create a small deck of cards by writing the list onto single pieces of paper. So when it's mine and Kate's turn, we'll pick that POV and then we'll plan and talk. Um, you could also have students roll dice and pick from the list on the board. And uh, the students can assign it to each other. So C and D can choose for A and B. Or finally, if you as the teacher are really making sure everyone is staying to the time, to the planning and speaking time, you can announce the point of view before each bracket is discussed. Um, so I really like this a lot. I think it makes students think harder and get more creative. All right, so I have a few questions for you about this activity. Kate and I just talked about indoor activities. So I'd like to know which topics would work best with your students. So remember, what do they like to talk about anyway? <laughs> what's familiar? What's interesting to them? Yeah, everyone. So we talked about indoor activities. What are some other um, topics that would be great for an activity like this bracket activity? Um, think of things that students like to talk about anyway, as Stephanie said, things that are lighter, not super, super serious, um, a little bit more fun, maybe a little bit easier vocabulary that you're, that maybe your students might already um, be familiar with. So what are some fun topics or questions that would work best with your students? Natalia says tourism, absolutely. Um, great, oh, best superhero movie from Juan Pablo, nice one. Painting or topic talking about painting or drawing. So what is better, painting or drawing? That's a good one. Comics from Inam, absolutely. Let's see, school subjects, great. Cuisine, absolutely. Types of food from Azran. Sports from Carmen. Seasons from Gabi, what is your, what is your favorite season? Uh, whether students should be allowed to bring phones to school, that can be serious for some students, that's for sure. Um, or maybe TV shows or video games. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, those are great. And the, especially um, great ways to draw students' interests in. All right. My other question about this is, uh, how can you scaffold this for students? How can you make sure they're successful? or support them, prepare them for this activity? Yeah, what do you think, everyone? What are some ways you could scaffold or support student success in this activity? What would you do? Maybe something before, during, or after the um, activity? What do you think you could do to help students succeed and be successful with this topic? What do you think? All right, Shara Hand says you can build their schemata, absolutely. 
Very good. What other things could you do to scaffold for this student? You could provide some resources, absolutely. You could have them brainstorm from Roger. Mm -hmm. Helena says you can give clear instructions, set tasks to research the topic at home, and then give them a time limit. You could discuss the topic pri uh, prior to. You could brainstorm ideas about the topic. And maybe you could even provide some vocabulary on the board, or you could even provide some sentence frames. So those are great ideas. Thanks, everyone. All right. Yes, thank you. And here's a few ideas that I had. I think you said them all. But um, so the first one is to pro provide sentence stems. So help them structure their arguments with uh, kind of a clear topic sentence and transition words. One thing that is really helpful in my experience is practice as a whole class before students go into groups so they understand uh, whose turn it is to speak. And then, as you all mentioned, uh, you can pre-teach useful vocabulary or grammar, so maybe some useful adjectives or comparatives to talk about why one activity is more interesting than the other things like that. But uh, I've seen students have a lot of fun and they like it because they're familiar topics. So they don't have to do a lot of work beforehand. They're almost everyone's ready to participate pretty immediately. All right. And the last way to wrap up this activity is just let's take a look at those 21st century skills. And uh, how does this develop it? Which skills did the activity develop? I yeah, what do you, oh, <laughs> here we go. What do you think? It looks like some of the, the check marks are already ready to go for us, but what do you think? What 21st century skills did this activity develop? Azran says all of them. Yeah, it really did help, probably help the students develop critical thinking skills, communication and talking to each other, listening, being aware of others' perspectives. What else do you think? Anything else you'd like to add to this one? I would add that it helped me to listen as the student who didn't do as well at first. I really learned a lot from Stephanie and I could apply it the next time I debated. So that was kind of um, great. And it sort of changed my mind based on new information in a way. And it also helped me to listen. Thanks. Flexibility, or uh, a lot of people are saying flexibility, social skills, creativity, and, and critical thinking from Altine, um, and many people saying all of them. And Farman says flexibility is the top one, flexibility on top. Excellent. Okay, thank you. So sounds like this is a pretty great choice for meeting those objectives that we decided are so important. So let's go on to our next activity. It is called Scenarios. And I bet a lot of this one will feel familiar to you, um, but it has a twist that you're going to see. So to get started, you're going to act like my students. So everyone needs a pencil and paper. And I'll give you a little bit of time to write down three of your strengths. So I have some sentence stems if it helps you, like I'm good at, I-N-G, I can, when things are difficult, I, other people say, I'm good at, I-N-G, or just, I really like to, maybe there's something you really like to do. Okay, so you might need a little more time to brainstorm. Feel free to take it and keep working on that. And for this next part, you just need to listen to this scenario. So this I would read, to my students. All right, here we go. You and your two friends are in a beautiful sailboat in the ocean. It's been a beautiful day, but you notice some clouds on the horizon. The clouds get bigger, the wind blows harder, and suddenly you're surrounded by huge waves and lightning. Lightning strikes your boat, and you and your two friends wash up on the shore of a deserted island. There's no one there, but after checking a map, you realize there is a populated island about 50 kilometers or 30 miles away. You and your friends have to come up with a solution. 
Okay, so we're going to do this part together step by step. So the first instructions for students is to get into groups of small uh, three and share the strengths you wrote down with your group. So Kate, what did you put as your strengths? You can see here that I wrote down, I can carry heavy things, I'm good at climbing, and I really like to go camping. Okay, and for mine, I put, I'm a strong swimmer. Other people tell me that I'm good at staying calm under pressure. I'm also good at making friendship bracelets, or I like to make friendship bracelets. Okay, step two for students is this. So think about tools or supplies that will be useful. So you can each choose one tool or one supply that you have with you, maybe something from the boat, something that would fit in your pocket. You can't say like, oh, a whole grocery store. Uh, you can also create one resource that's already on the island. So here are some ideas. You can brainstorm this with your students. You can give them a list, whatever works. Um, so things like a backpack, a lighter, a rope. For resources, we can think of things like there are coconut trees, there's fresh water, tall grass on the island, whatever works. This is very open to creativity. All right, Kate, what did you choose for your tool and your resource? I chose a lighter and coconut trees. All right, and I chose wood from the boat and fresh water since we need it to live. All right, we seem pretty prepared. What's next? All right, so this third step for students is, is to decide how your unique skills can help you either leave the island and reach a populated place about 30 miles away, or maybe you just stay on the island and live a good life. So some type of solution to this problem. So students need to know by the end of your discussion, you need to present three possible solutions to the class. All right, so Kate and I have brainstormed already. Here are some things we came, oh, actually, here's a summary for you. So how can we reach safety? Um, you will see this slide again. You'll have a chance to think about it. So we have Kate's strengths of carrying heavy things, climbing, camping, my strengths of swimming, staying calm, and really like tying a lot of knots basically, and our supplies are a lighter, wood from the boat, fresh water, and coconut trees. So like I said, Kate and I already had a chance to discuss. We have a couple solutions, but we will need your help. So Kate, what, uh, what do you think? Any ideas? Let's see. Well, I could climb trees to um, get coconuts and leaves, and I could also collect wood from the ship. Okay. And I suppose I can take those leaves and help like make them into a rope and tie it around the raft uh, or make tie it around the wood to make a raft. And uh, so we're going to raft to safety. Also, um, this other one, I think you can build us a place to sleep and make a big fire since you're good at camping. And if the fire is big enough, the people on the island will see the smoke and they'll come get us. And I'll, I can keep us calm while we wait. <laughs> so, all right, we thought of two solutions. I mentioned we need three. So here's your chance, everyone. Do you see a third solution that we didn't think of? Feel free to add your own supplies, your own strengths. Uh, you can be part of our team. All right, thanks everyone. Let us know what is a final solution here. And I see a lot of people sharing their strengths. Malid is good at fishing. That would have been good for us. Um, one person says they like to go shopping. I'm not sure if that would, would help in this situation, but you never know. Maybe you could put your shopping skills to finding resources on the island. Great. What do you think, everyone? What is solution number three? 
definitely teamwork is involved here. We need to work together to get ourselves either off the island or able to survive. Okay, good. Asran says we should stay positive. Based on my strengths and Stephanie's strengths, what do you think? What's a third solution that could help us in this situation to survive or to get out of there? Well, I will say, as we're waiting for responses, I will say, um, I know it'd be nice to stick together, but it's possible that I could have Stephanie go swim. I hope you have enough energy to swim that far away while I wait and I can create the fire and wait for people to come. But it makes me a little nervous having you swim that far. But since you're good at swimming, I think it might, it might be good because you can also stay calm if you feel a little nervous about it. That's a good point. And plus someone on our team mentioned they're good at fishing. So I think we'll load up, we'll eat a great meal of fish and like coconuts. I'll be, have my strength and get going. Wonderful. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So if you think of one, feel free to share it. But uh, for now, we'll keep going and we'll wrap this up and just look at which 21st century skills does this one develop? So what do you think again, everybody? You can see yeah. some of them, but what is what in your opinion, what do you think is the most important or the most evident 21st century skill that we developed in this activity? What do you think everybody? Critical thinking from Harwan. Yep, absolutely. You had to really think through what you might be able to do. Flexibility from Hasnain, great. Critical thinking also, Jessam says critical thinking. Flexibility and social skills. I think also collaboration was a big one. You have to talk and listen to each other, create, create something together, working with others to create something. Yeah. Critical, um, a lot of people saying critical thinking, and I would absolutely agree. We had to find solutions to problems and we had to think outside the box or we had to think of something different that isn't right there in front of us. So yeah. great, everybody. Thank, thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, thank you. And, I, and I'll also say that I think these types of discussions are a lot more fun than kind of a formal debate. They're very relaxed. So students end up talking a lot and they have a lot of very surprising and creative ideas. So I love facilitating activities like these. Okay, on to our final activity. This one is called See, Think, Wonder. And it's a very quick activity. It could be a warm up to a unit or just a standalone activity. It helps students strengthen their questioning skills and really be comfortable with um, drawing conclusions, but also not being exactly sure about answers. So you'll see what I mean, and you'll get to participate in every step of this. So the instructions are very simple. It's just this, you will see a picture and answer three questions. So I invite you all to answer each of the questions. The first one is this, here's our picture. And our question is, what do you see? Yeah, so, so go ahead, Kate. Yeah, for this one, try to only think about what you actually see. For example, I see bright, bright colors and beautiful clothes. What do you think? And then we'll go to the next one. Yep, to the next question. What do you see? Just looking at what you see. Let us take a look at your answers. Focus on objects that you can see in the photo. Two people talking from Isabel. A couple from Anna. Silver decorations from Heather. <laughs> Most people already know, I think they're moving on to number two. Ah. Let's go to the second question. Sure. Okay. So <laughs> or you second, can go ahead and explain this part. Yeah. And then we'll go. Yeah. To this question. is just the nice part um, to really get students maybe to use certain language. So like 
present continuous. They are sitting in fancy chairs. They are talking. Uh, he is holding her toe for some reason. Um, so really concrete facts and observations. Our next one is, what do you think? So what do your observations make you guess? Do you have any guesses or, the or theories? All right, what do you think is going on here? We see everyone writing, it's an in Indian uh, wedding. Mm -hmm. um, bride and groom are talking. It's a marriage, it's a ceremony, a ritual. Oh, an Indian wedding scene from Malik, a couple from Daisy. Yeah. A Daisy man removing good. something from his wife's foot. That's a great answer to the first question. Absolutely. Indian traditional wedding from Assad. Indian couple, newlyweds. Asran says Indian Hindu marriage ceremony. And a ritual of marriage is going on here from Labna. Excellent. Okay, and just a few other um, ideas in some language, like I think it's a wedding. Maybe red is an important wedding color. There's a lot of red in the picture. All right, and the last question is, so it's called See, Think, Wonder. So the last question is, what do you wonder? What questions do you have about this photo? Yeah, what questions do you have? What do you wonder about this what questions do you have as you look at the photo? I, I'm, my question is, what are they talking about? <laughs> what about you? What are, what do you wonder about this picture? Why is there so much red? Yep, that's a great question. Why are they using that color so much? Absolutely. I wonder if they love each other, Dominica. I guess, my guess is that they do, but who knows? Um, <laughs> let's see, why on earth is he holding her toe from Halina? <laughs> why is he touching the toe? Why a lot of people saying, why is the man touching the late woman's toe? Okay. Absolutely. Great, everyone. Thanks for sharing. Okay. And I can ask, answer some of these questions because that is a photo of me and my husband. So you're right. This is an Indian wedding. It is a traditional Hindu wedding. And I'll try to explain the toe part. My understanding is that in a Hindu wedding, there's something called the seven steps. It's also like seven promises or vows that you make to each other. So my toe is on the first one because we are talking about that first vow. So that is what's happening. Oh, and I'll also answer. Yes, they love each other. Still do. It was five years ago. <laughs> so you could end your activity here, but you could also add one question to wrap it up. And so uh, a good question to ask your students is how can you find out? So it's great if you have, um, maybe there's an article that they can read to answer their questions. Maybe there's someone there to answer questions. But you could also ask students, how can you find out do a tiny bit of research and come back to class and share what you learned. So it's a really simple activity. You could see it's very quick. It's a nice warm up. Could also end your lesson, whatever works for you. All right. And then uh, I have another question for you. So, of course, that was a, a picture from my personal photos. But where else could you find pictures for this activity? Yeah, what do you think, everyone? Where else could you find pictures for this activity? Harwan says, or Haran says, Google. The internet from Inam. Where else could you find pictures? Pinterest from newspapers online, absolutely, from Valentina. Great. You could even find them from your own experience like Stephanie did here. So if you have nice photos of or any photo of your own experience, that might be interesting too. Great. Okay. And I have Thank a few everyone. other ideas for mm -hmm. you. All right. So um, 
you could use your own pictures, but you can also encourage students to bring in pictures. So maybe their own, uh, if they're feeling shy, it could be ones they choose from online. Sometimes textbook pictures have, textbooks have really beautiful images. You could also look for magazines or newspapers, especially National Geographic. And finally, a favorite that's come up before is Voice of America Learning English. They have something called the Day in Photos, and those are always really captivating. Um, so we'll just wrap up this activity. We'll see that, again, it touches on a lot of the 21st century skills, especially like that curiosity, getting new information. Um, and before we go, I want to make sure we have time for my last two questions for you. So the first one is, which activity would you like to try in your classroom? Yeah, everyone, what do you think? Which activity would you like to use in your classroom? Discussion brackets, scenarios, or see, think, wonder? Harwan says scenarios, great. Ha uh, Twin says all of them. Absolutely, I think a lot of people will want to use all of these wonderful activities. I really loved the discussion brackets activity and I thought it was really fun to do and to model for you all. Asran says, see, think and wonder. All of them, but especially the last one. And a lot of people saying all of them and a lot of people starting to give their thanks and appreciation for this wonderful webinar. Oh, thank you, everyone. I'm glad. I hope you get to have a lot of fun with these in your classes. And so one final reflection question for you is, in what ways or way has your thinking about debates changed? Yeah, what would you think? What would you say, everybody? How has your thinking about debates changed? Here we're asking you for some flexibility in your thinking, for some critical thinking to think about how maybe this changed your perspective a little bit. What do you think, everyone? How has this changed your thinking about debates? What do you think? I would say personally that um, I have found a lot of really fun activities that aren't so serious and structured like debates. And I like that idea of flexibility and fun. I think that's always nice in an English language learning classroom. Me too. Claude Harry says he has a lot more ideas about group activities. What else? How has, okay, Arum says found they found innovative ideas. You can really change debates according to the topic and your, your students. 21st century skills itself, that idea can help you to change your thinking about the traditional debate from Asran, very nice. It can be a very nice speaking activity and not a serious debate. And Atika says it's more practical and enjoyable. Um, one more from Helena, I love debates. However, today I saw a different approach where pair work is emphasized, discussion brackets. I also like the steps to develop the scenario and ideas for see, think, wonder. Well done, American English and Stephanie. Okay. Absolutely, very, very nice activity or very nice comment, thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate that feedback and even more so all of your participation. So thanks for joining and it was a pleasure speaking with you. Happy teaching to all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Stephanie, for that great webinar, for those in, um, helping us to uh, engage our students and to build fluency in 21st century skills through alternatives to, tra to traditional debate. And as always, we'd love to thank you, our wonderful audience, for your engagement and participation today. Please continue to share your ideas through social media or with your viewing groups after the session ends.